I have never been ill, and I don't have any illness. If I don't get demented, if I'm if I died at 95, my brain would be quite unusual. We want those brains. I was born in the roadside uh, of Chongqing, and uh, right after the Second World War. And so the Japanese, when they came to Guilin, my family already had left, and this massive amount of people, they're all running away and, and traveling to um, Chongqing, we're getting away. And so, you know, while on the road, and I was born. Those were the days that you do whatever you can to, to run away, you know, and uh, to get to better places. I actually started this journey in science not knowing that I would be able to be where I am. I actually um, uh, work on the brain, so I'm a neuroscientist. So I study these uh, diseases of aging people. I actually uh, think about these things quite a bit in the sense of, um, you know, uh, when I see older people and even some of my relatives and they are not as sharp. And, you know, why do we age? Why do we f become forgetful? Whenever you, you study disease, you have to study the patients, right? I mean, so you have to get brains so that you can study them. Some places would just take that whole brain and dump it in a bucket of formalin, and which basically fix everything so it's no good. So what we do is that when we get the brain in, we actually take samples on one side of the brain, take the samples of different brain regions, like frontal cortex or temporal cortex, and then we basically bisect the brain in half, and then we slap the brain this way. You have now different pieces of brain, they're about maybe one centimeter thick. We put these pieces of brain into seal and meal bags, and then we label them and put them into two boxes. Okay, they're frozen at minus 80. The brain is just not a brain because all the information on the patient, even from life, to death and from, you know, uh, 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 neuropathological postmortem diagnosis are all there. And so that you can look at, review all the information and before you can select the case for your experiments. So we have been building our brain bank now for about um, almost 30 years. It's a good time for people that are aging to feel optimistic that some down, somewhere down the line that there may be actually um, treatment that could delay the onset of dementia or make them, you know, to sustain their, their cognition a little bit longer. But I think that, you know, as I said, you, we need to know how the brain change into a diseased brain. To do that, you need also control brains as well. You need brains with no disease. That's what I call a control brain. Without the control, we were not able to compare. Getting controls are one of the most difficult efforts. I don't know why. I guess maybe because, you know, when, you're, when your father or your mother died at the age of 95, you might feel that it's not respectful to donate their body or their brain for scientific research. Patients that have a disease and they, you know, if you say that you, I want to study your disease, that they're more likely to donate or their family would donate. You know, it, it really would be helpful and for the field to help their children and their grandchildren too in the future. But people don't think of it that way. If you don't get any diseases, your brain and your body will be very valuable, you know, for research because we need to understand why you age so well. I think that for me, I'm, I'm getting on and I hopefully, particularly if I don't contract any disease, if I don't get Alzheimer's disease and I live for another 10 years or more, and I would be an extremely valuable control. You know, they want to see my brain, they can see my brain.